So in this video, I'm going to give you a behind the scenes look on a recent project they did with Mazda. I've just delivered the full video and they accepted it. So that's all nice and it's all done. So it's kind of nice to talk about this project now. I'd just like to give you a sense of what it's like to shoot a project like this. Things that go on in my head, choices I have to make, what the communication is like with the agency and client and all that stuff. So the whole project was shot on the Sony FX6, which is the camera you're viewing me through right now. I also use the Sony FX3, but we mainly use it on the gimbal and for behind the scenes stuff. That one, so the Sony FX3, was paired with pretty much the 2470 24 7. Huh. Now, for experimental shots, we mainly used this lens, the Laowa Pro 2B, which is a 24mm macro lens with a T8 sort of probe style elements group thing. For the main film, we used the Kook SP3 lenses. These are new kind of cinema lenses on the market, and they're based on the old Prancho or Pancho, which are probably the most popular cinema lenses on the market. Then I also use a slider. Now, usually a slider is extremely big, but for this project, I used the Magic Carpet Pro. Then of course, because this was a car shoot, I also brought a car rig. <laughs> The communication on a gig like this usually starts with an email. This includes some nice words about past work you've done, who they are, and what the possible collaboration is. Then over a couple of emails, you establish the budget. So you send out a quote, and they will always negotiate and give you less. Keep that in mind. Then you plan a pre-production meeting, PPM. Then we met on Zoom, talked over the project, and planned another meeting with the ski makers to get to know them a little bit too. Once all production things are done, like booking hotels, begging Irwin to come with me, and packing gear, it was time for the shoot. We're on our way to Austria. 10 hours in the car. Nice. Because making skis and snowboards can take up to 50 hours, we divided the process over a couple days. On each day, we filmed some shots in the workshop, and during the mornings or afternoons, we tried to record some stuff in the mountains, like slope skiing or tour skiing. The shooting schedule itself was very flexible, and that has everything to do with the weather. It's impossible to plan something weeks before, as you just don't know what's going to happen. This, for a film production, is very challenging. Luckily, Erwin, myself, and the guys we filmed all know what the weather is like in the mountains. To cope with something like this, I made a simple list of must-haves. Sequences or shots that I absolutely cannot miss out on, or otherwise the video is crap. For this shoot, there was plenty of car shots. Shots of Innsbruck, the workshop, the process in detail, solid interviews, nature shots, macro detail shots, ski touring, and ski shots. Seems like a lot, but in five days, you kind of have enough time usually. During the week, I would check the weather forecast closely and make plans according to that. To give an example, on day three, we went to Lucens to film some shots of the car. The weather, however, was terrible. No visibility, no snow, just slush and rain. The next day, however, the whole landscape changed. It was exactly what I was dreaming of. These shots were very much necessary to set the mood of the film. That morning, we drove back to Lucens with Michi and Peter. We shot 80% of the shots that made it into the final edit. I also shot some detailed shots of the car in a studio in Holland. And these shots turned out to be super valuable to build up a lot of tension in the edit. A quick shout out to my friend Daniel for the support. These shots came in super useful during the edit process, by far the hardest process of the whole project. So the first thing I did was sort all the clips and make a logic timeline. For me, this usually goes per day. So if you take a look at this one, you see that all the days are sort of, you know, put in like days. And then after the date, I just write down what we've done in one or two keywords. So studio, drive, process, mountain, process, car, interview. So this is basically the setup that I always use. Then I have my timelines, um, which is spots, here are like the ASMR, car, city, interview, slope. So I pretty much all like dump all the clips in there. Then something that I always do is put color codes on different uh, sequences of the clips. So this part, for example, was shot during um, the nice winter vibe, you know? And then this part was shot with the slush. So I kind of know when I see the colors in the main edit, um, 
what is going on. So I know exactly that these shots are shot during the nice winter vibes. Secondly, I've done a lot of research on how to edit fast paced sequences to start with. I played videos from Zilversmiths and Railing Joey frame by frame. Imagine standing at the edge and taking that last step. Time stops. Your heartbeat slows. You hear a ringing in your ears. And then you simply fall. I found out that it has a lot to do with how you shoot. So um, different whips or like uh, slow shutter movements. All these things blend very nicely together in a very fast paced sequence, which of course I didn't do. So I had to sort of you know, make my own style or make my own way. But it's a nice thing to learn. Um, and perhaps I should have done that in the pre-production. But yeah, that's how you always learn something from every project. When all this was done and all the research was done, I tried to make my first intro, which was horrible. Hey, I'm Short, a documentary and outdoor filmmaker from Holland. I kept perfecting it, added sound effects, I did some color grading, and slowly but steadily it came together. Then I started sorting the interview, which is always a daunting task, knowing what the client expects, knowing what the gentleman said. That's the old man, old chief, <laughs> from like here at the shop 40 years before. And then the pressure of piecing it all together is always very, like, heavy. But I kind of managed, so I, you know, cut and did a lot of sort of tricks to blend parts together that were not even sort of set together in one sentence, but it worked out. The video structure was set from the beginning as it's part of a series. So it had an intro of me explaining what was about to go down, then a brief introduction of the craftsman, then the process of the item they crafted, which is a very lengthy process in ski making, which was a challenge to get into like a minute, you know. Then it was free until the end to, you know, fill the whole video with the remainder of the like things they said and the cool things they did. After a long time of trial and error, I came up with an edit that I showed to my friend Erwin, who was, you know, with me at the shoot. I did send him a rough cut. He'd write a novel with feedback um, and it would obey, you know. All jokes aside, it was really nice he helped and it really helped me to get another perspective on this project because at some point after nine days of editing or like eight days of editing, you're so sort of stuck in this hole um, and if you can find a pair of eyes that, you know, have experience editing and can see the edit from a different perspective, that just is super valuable. So I highly recommend you just find people in your surrounding, um, yeah, to help you do that. Maybe join the FMC. Yeah, it's a filmmakers community I set up, but I won't go into detail about it, but link is in the description. Join it. It's nice. I exported the project, uploaded it to my NAS, backed up the whole project and called it a day. And that was the editing process. So uh, I think that's a nice ending for this video. Hope you enjoyed. I certainly did enjoy making this whole project happen. And I'm extremely honored that Mazda Europe decided to work with me on this, uh, trusted me with this. Um, yeah, and all the producers and people over at uh, the agency, thank you so much for all the help. You guys are amazing. And thank you so much for watching. Over and out.